Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, September 25th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storms Harness Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I noticed an increase in attacks exploiting a recently disclosed vulnerability in Racecom gateway devices. The vulnerability was originally disclosed at the end of July and as far as I know, Racecom has neither acknowledged the vulnerability nor released any firmware updates. The Racecom website actually doesn't really have any kind of firmware download options or past security content. Maybe that's locked down to only be available by actual users of these devices. The vulnerability itself is, well, an easily exploitable OS command injection problem. There appears to be no need to authenticate to trigger the vulnerability. Our sensors detected first exploits at the beginning of September. And an initial wave about a week ago, the attempted exploit is pretty straightforward, either curl or TFTP in the later wave that sort of started yesterday is used to download code from another system and then execute it. I was not able to download the second stage file, but based on some of the scripts being called TP link, I assume that the attacker is using a bot to breach various routers and just added this particular exploit to their repertoire. Without a patch, the only recourse users have is to either bin the device or at least restrict access to the admin console. I would probably suggest uh, the decommissioning option given the nature of the vulnerability being very basic, no real security response here from the vendor. So who knows what else is lurking in the firmware of these devices. Talking about perimeter devices, a new vulnerability was disclosed in Cello Points Secure email gateway. The vulnerability was made public by the Taiwanese CERT. A buffer overflow allows unauthenticated remote code execution. This buffer overflow only causes actually a denial of service condition. What makes it so bad is that due to the denial of service, due to crashing the particular service, it's then possible to bypass authentication and gain administrator privileges. A patch is available for this vulnerability. And last week, I mentioned the vulnerability in Cisco's smart licensing utility. We now have additional details regarding this vulnerability, thanks to Nicholas Stark. In particular, uh, the blog post reveals the hard-coded password used in the product. This vulnerability should be patched quickly as attacks probably have already started. And talking about exploited vulnerabilities, CISA added the recent Ivanti Virtual Traffic Manager vulnerability to its catalog of exploited vulnerabilities. The vulnerability can be used to bypass authentication and was originally patched and made public on August 12th. And then we have some vulnerability controversy brewing around Linux. Security researcher Simon Margartelli stated that they informed software maintainers of an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability affecting all GNU Linux systems. According to Simon, the CVSS score of the issue is 9.9. He also states that Canonical as well as Red Hat confirmed that assessment. Simon stated that uh, they believe uh, software maintainers are not treating that sort of with the necessary urgency and they suggest to disclose the issue on Monday on the open wall security mailing list with more details being released the Sunday after on October 6th. At this point, no details are known. No CVE has been assigned yet. It's not even clear if this is like an operating system issue, like a kernel issue, or if this is just a daemon that's commonly installed on Linux systems. 
Simon's X account where they made the original announcement is protected. So unless you follow them, the post is not readable. I'll link uh, instead to securityonline.info, which has a decent summary of what's going on here. At this point, I would refrain from panicking, but set aside some time on the 30th uh, on Monday to figure out if the issue affects you and uh, what mitigating steps you may need to take in order to protect yourself. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.